Well, hey guys, today's video, I'm gonna be reviewing the new Selfless by Hiram Skincare Brown. This has been a highly requested review and I'm pretty excited. Full disclosure, today's video is not sponsored, but these products were sent to me for free. I did not pay for them. Of course, there was no expectation to review them, except you guys have really been asking for me to review them. So that's what we're gonna do in today's video. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Andrea. I'm a board certified dermatologist. I'd love it if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the thumbs up. It really helps my videos out a lot. All right, let's start with the most difficult, and that is a cleanser. I say difficult because I always have a hard time saying anything noteworthy about cleansers. I mean, they, they are for washing your face. What else can we really say about them? But this is the Green Tea and Centella Cleanser. Uh, it's $20 for 150 mLs. This is a pretty gentle cleanser. It does foam. It's got uh, two surfactants in it, cocomethyl propyl betaine, and it's got a alkyl glucoside. Those are gentle surfactants that you can find in a lot of like um, tear-free baby shampoo type formulations that really do cleanse and remove dirt, oil, impurities, and all those sorts of things. What you want from a cleanser. Uh, this product also has, you know, it boasts having green tea and centella, but those are antioxidants, wonderful ingredients. To what extent they benefit the skin in a cleanser, kind of hard to say. You know, you're rinsing off the cleanser. It's not really giving adequate time for those ingredients to penetrate. All that being said, what was my experience using this cleanser? I used it by itself to remove uh, that Aven tinted sunscreen that I reviewed for you guys. You know, the one that kind of looks a little on the terracotta pot side as far as the tint. Uh, it removed that readily. It also removed the Maybelline um, Sky High mascara with no problems. I didn't have to use an oil cleanse beforehand. I don't wear makeup, but it did a good job taking those things off and it did not leave my skin feeling dry, stripped, irritated. It was, it's a good cleanser. I mean, it does what it's supposed to do. It imparts a little bit of foam, rinses off easily. If you enjoy like a sensorial experience when it comes to washing your face, you're not gonna get it with this uh, because it is free of fragrance and pretty no nonsense as far as the ingredients. It's very similar, in my opinion, to many uh, of the baby wash and shampoos that I've reviewed for you guys before in terms of the consistency, the lather, the cleansing ability. Okay, number two is the Niacinamide and Maracuja Daily Barrier Support Moisturizer. This product, on first impression, I was actually pretty disappointed with it. It's very watery. I was going in expecting a moisturizer. It's more of the consistency of a serum. What are the ingredients? It has 5% niacinamide, and niacinamide, as a reminder, is a uh, B vitamin that, when applied to the skin, can help fight off uh, free radical damage. It also helps with skin brightening. It can reduce yellowing of the skin. It has anti-aging benefit and it is good for the state of the moisture barrier and recovery of your skin barrier if your skin is easily irritated. I mean, it's a good moisturizing ingredient and it also can help improve the appearance of pores and it can help with issues related to oily acne prone skin. So it has that and it has a logical percentage. You guys know I detest products that have very high percentages of niacinamide because they lure the consumer into thinking that it's more effective when in reality it just ends up being more irritating. 5% is the percentage strength used in the studies that show benefit uh, for hyperpigmentation. So that's great. This product also has medecicide, which is derived from centella, uh, and it is a wonderful ingredient for uh, reducing oxidative stress in the skin. It's also very helpful for the moisture barrier, a logical ingredient. Now the maracuja, that's passion fruit oil, which if you are into makeup, you probably have heard about this from Tarte. They use that in all of their products. Uh, it's just an emollient, I mean, oils, they're emollients, and they're useful in moisturizers to help smooth down skin cell edges. And uh, the other ingredient in this is muramuru seed butter, which is gonna act as an occlusive to seal in hydration and reduce trans epidermal water loss, similar to shea butter. This product has ingredients that are logical in a moisturizer. Uh, passion fruit oil or maracuja oil is an emollient. Uh, it also has triolene, which is another emollient. It has mermua seed butter as an occlusive, and it has glycerin, which is a humectant. And then it's got some ingredients that benefit the skin barrier, namely niacinamide and medecicide. 
I have to say though, I was a little disappointed, especially the first few times I used this with the overall consistency of this. The first ingredient is water and you'll notice when you use it, it is very watery. It feels more like a serum than an actual moisturizer. Mm -hmm. When it comes to moisturizers, my preference is always something that is based in petrolatum or a silicone like dimethicone because they really do help in reducing trans epidermal water loss. Um, but I do love like a good shea butter based moisturizer as well. Um, I was expecting something more along the consistency of just shea butter, that thick kind of cream. That's really what I was looking for, what I look for in a moisturizer, something that's really going to lock in hydration and reduce trans epidermal water loss. This feels more like a lightweight moisturizing serum. It's not a bad product though, but if you are picking it up off the shelf, thinking that it's going to be your moisturizer, I think that this may be inadequate. I will say, in my experience using this product, while I found that it was very, very watery, much like a serum, uh, my skin did feel like really soft after using it. So I think it is good. I think the ingredients are effective in this product and I, I don't think it's a bad product. But if you are somebody with very dry skin or you need a heavier moisturizer, if you have mature skin, I don't think that this is going to meet your needs in terms of moisturizing. Yes, it is a good, um, serum, I would say, for hydration and improving moisture barrier recovery, but you may find that it comes up short in terms of reducing trans epidermal water loss because it is so watery. All right, moving on, let's talk about the retinol and rainbow algae. This is a retinol serum. Retinol, if you're not aware, is a form of topical vitamin A, which when applied to the skin can get converted to retinoic acid down, down the line. And that ultimately can help improve wrinkles, fine lines. It can improve hyperpigmentation, discoloration, and with long-term use um, can boost up collagen production. However, uh, not all retinols are, are created equal. The devil is in the details when it comes to formulation. And so what should you look for? Well, ideally the manufacturer has uh, measure the efficacy of their retinol by looking at the activity of a particular enzyme in the skin, uh, CP450 RAH. The activity of this enzyme is an indicator of retinoic acid activity. So it basically tells you that the retinol got into the skin, got converted to retinoic acid, and is now functional. Um, unfortunately, we never know if brands do this or not. That is why I'm a huge proponent of sticking to big, big brands that have a long-standing track record of retinol formulation that have a lot of R&D, you know, that they, they actually do this. That is why I'm such a fan, for example, of the Neutrogena Rapid Wrinkle Repair Regenerating Cream or the CeraVe Retinols. Uh, by L'Oreal because I know that those brands actually do this test and then they actually take their products into dermatology clinics and do some clinical testing as well. So you really get a full, full picture of how effective their retinol is. But retinol is a cosmeceutical ingredient, it is a non-drug cosmetic, so brands don't have to do that. And so that is, you know, that is something we're just not going to know about this product. Now this brand, if I didn't already mention, is under the umbrella of the Inky List. The Inky List has a retinol, and I would say the exact same thing about their retinol. You know, we just don't know. Does it actually get in the skin and activate this enzyme and you know do what retinol is supposed to? We really don't know. I would assume that this is the same retinol as in their retinol serum. Uh, it's an encapsulated retinol. What does that mean? Well, that means that it allows for more of a slow release into the skin, as you guys if you've watched any of my videos now about retinol, it can be very irritating. So having an encapsulated retinol, it just kind of makes it a lot more tolerable. It does make it um, less irritating, uh, but it does take some time for it to actually show, show results of improving discoloration and, and whatnot. So you have to be patient with it. It's just cosmeceutical retinols, they can be an unknown. That is why, again, I'm a big fan of sticking with the, with the big brands. A lot of people get hung up on the percentage of the retinol and products. They'll you know, get hung up on the fact that it is lower down on the ingredient list. I wouldn't worry about that. Studies actually show that when it comes to retinol um, and that enzyme activity, you get good readout with 0.025%. Uh, Another ingredient in this that may also be beneficial to you is 2% tranexamic acid. Now tranexamic acid is actually an ingredient that we give by mouth to treat melasma, a disease of hyperpigmentation. It can be very helpful for that condition. There is some enthusiasm for applying it topically to the skin. The studies on that ingredient are very small. The data on tranexamic acid applied to the skin is a bit mixed. 
Another benefit though that has been shown in these studies is that it can improve redness. So the tranexamic acid may help reduce redness and irritation related to the retinol in this product. Let's talk about the rainbow algae. What the heck is that and why is it in here? Well, algae, rainbow algae sea is seaweed, a type of seaweed, uh, which is a macro algae. A very logical ingredient and commonly found in skincare products. No, not necessarily the specific type of seaweed, but you know, many types of seaweed you can find in skincare products. In fact, La Mer is based entirely on seaweed. Um, seaweeds are rich in polyphenols for reducing oxidative stress. They're also really good moisturizing ingredients and they have a function in products to act as thickeners. Have you ever eaten seaweed? It kind of can have a bit of a gelatinous um, texture related to the polysaccharides which really hold on to water. So great ingredient, makes perfect sense to include it in your product. So the particular seaweed in this, Cystocera tamarisca flora or rainbow algae, you know, there is actually a, company that created this ingredient they call Cy White. And this company claims that Cy White, that they showed in their industry studies, which you always have to take with a grain of salt, uh, they claim that it inhibited some of the transfer of pigment around, so maybe it can be helpful for hyperpigmentation. It's an industry study, so we don't really know the full picture there. They're not really sharing much. Um, but there is, you know, some suggestion that it could be helpful for hyperpigmentation as well. All right, this is probably my favorite product from this brand. It's the Mandelic, what's it called? Mandelic Acid and Rice Brown. $24 for 30 mLs. This has um, some alpha hydroxy acids, which not only help to exfoliate the top dead layer of the skin, ultimately improving skin texture, but with long-term consistent use, they can um, improve hyperpigmentation and they can improve the moisture retaining ability of the skin, they act as humectants. Uh, now they can be very irritating, in particular glycolic acid, the smallest alpha hydroxy acid. But this product uses Mandelic, a much larger and gentler alpha hydroxy acid. Um, and this product also uses 0.5% phytic acid, which yes, is an alpha hydroxy acid, but I wouldn't really classify it as like an exfoliant. It's mostly used in products as an antioxidant. Fine, I mean, that's in there. It does have, uh, some data behind it for, uh, it, it may help to, by chelating iron actually, it may help in reducing uh, DNA damage. Uh, this also has uh, polyhydroxy acids in it, which are um, very, very, very gentle exfoliants that with long-term consistent use really do help with skin hydration. It has gluconolactone. And then it has a beta hydroxy acid, salicylic acid, at a low percentage strength of 0.5%. And that's gonna be helpful for exfoliating the pore and improving the look of oily skin. While this product has exfoliating acids that do help in increasing skin cell turnover, it's very, very, very gentle. Uh, in fact, you may be able to use it if you have very sensitive skin, including if you have rosacea. Um, I wouldn't hang my hat on that because everyone's rosacea, you know, is pretty individualized as far as what will cause irritation for you. But generally speaking, mandelic and polyhydroxy acids, they mostly act as huma humectants and they're such gentle exfoliants that sometimes even the most sensitive skin types can use them. Now this does have salicylic acid in it, but it does have a pretty low percentage strength, 0.5. Now that is an effective concentration. It will work within the pore to clear it out and help with acne control, uh, but it's gonna be less irritating than a higher percentage. It just, it takes longer to work at that lower percentage than a higher percentage, but it's still effective. This also has niacinamide in it, which is great for calming down redness. It can help with hyperpigmentation and it helps with the moisture barrier. It's a logical ingredient to add to this. They don't tell you what the percentage strength is, but I imagine it is definitely less than 5%. Um, I would imagine. They don't disclose that, but I'm guessing it's less than 5%. Overall, this is a good product for anybody who is looking to improve skin texture, moisture content in the skin, get firmer, smoother skin. Um, you don't need very much of this. My one gripe though with this product, as well as the retinol actually, is the packaging. Um, it's a little difficult to get precise drops. Well, now, now it's going for me. Um, the first few times I used this, I found that 
you just kind of have to be careful. If you squeeze too hard, it shoots right out of the bottle and you lose a lot of the product. But you don't actually need very much of this to just spread a nice thin, even layer across the surface of the skin. Um, you would use this up to twice a day as tolerated. Apply it, allow it to absorb fully, and then apply moisturizer on over it, or you can apply uh, sunscreen on over it. Um, it's a very good product. Um, I would definitely recommend doing a little test spot of it just to make sure it doesn't cause too much irritation for you. Last but not least is a product that is actually pretty similar to the Mandelic product. It is the salicylic acid and sea kelp. Salicylic acid, as I said in the, in the prior product, is a beta hydroxy acid. It concentrates in the oily surfaces, so it's really good if you have enlarged pores that are prone to blackheads. It helps with acne control, and it can also help, uh, because it increases skin cell turnover, it helps to brighten up areas of hyperpigmentation, discoloration, so you can get more even skin tone. So it's calling out the salicylic acid as part of its name, but it has the same percentage strength of salicylic acid as the Mandelic product. This product just doesn't have the Mandelic acid or the Phytic acid piece. So it is more, I guess you would say beta, it's, it's a beta hydroxy acid leave-on product at this point. It also has niacinamide like the, um, like the Mandelic product. This product does disclose the percentage, it's 5%. So I'm guessing the Mandelic product is also 5%. All right, this also has, as part of its namesake, kelp, uh, you know, a seaweed that, again, rich in humectants, antioxidants, logical ingredient. Kelp is frequently in a lot of skincare products. So that makes perfect sense. It, help, it will help reduce the dryness and irritation that you might experience with using a salicylic acid product. And it kind of addresses the needs of the moisture barrier in, in conjunction with the niacinamide. This has 2% succinic acid. There's one paper showing that it may help in supporting the skin microbiome, but the inky list makes some large claims about succinic acid. And they were even quoted in an article saying it hasn't hit mainstream science yet. Like, okay. Um, so yeah, don't, don't fall into the succinic acid. It's not a bad ingredient. I just wouldn't call it out as, you know, noteworthy per se. As far as the Mandelic versus the salicylic acid, Honestly, splitting hairs as far as the difference between the two, they're both good products for helping improve hyperpigmentation, improve uh, overall skin texture, or just gentle, gentle exfoliants uh, that you can use on a daily basis, as opposed to things like the Ordinary's AHA BHA peeling solution, where you would only want to do that a few times a week. It is a more intense exfoliant. These are very gentle exfoliants and they also help with moisture con with moisture retention, and they also can help improve uh, discoloration. But it's really splitting hairs between the two as far as which one you would wanna go with. I would say if you are more interested in just uh, pores and oily skin, then go with the salicylic product. But if you want a little bit more in terms of the skin texture piece, then you may select the mandelic acid product because you are getting that extra alpha hydroxy acid that can really help long term with improving the moisture content of the skin. So those are just, you know, some subtle differences between the two. So those are the five products that came out in this launch. I think overall they're not bad. The ingredients make sense. I appreciate the fact that there aren't a lot of goofy ingredients. There aren't any goofy ingredients actually. Everything is an ingredient that you know we've talked about at length on this channel and you know good ingredients green tea centella mandelic acid salicylic acid uh, you know the marine extracts the, the kelp the rainbow algae those are good humectants so the ingredients are logical they make sense they're not over the top there's no essential oils fragrance what about the price point? Are these products worth the price? It depends on what you consider worth it to you. What, what are your goals? <laughs> the price point is middle of the road, actually, in terms of the spectrum of what skincare companies charge. I don't mean middle of the road for what I would spend. I mean middle of the road for what brands charge. I reviewed a brand on Friday that nobody's ever heard of, not many people have heard of, uh, at least judging by my comment section, that charges the same price. Five products, similar price point to these. So the price is what it is, but it is under the umbrella company of the Inky List. So why would you pay so much more 
for products from the same brand. Well, you're paying for, first of all, some of the products have more than, more than one or two ingredients. And you're also paying to support the individual whose name is on the package. If that is of importance to you, if you like that individual, you wanna support them in their career, then yeah, I definitely do think that the price point is worth it. But if it's not in your budget, then absolutely not. There are tons of more affordable options out there on the market that have equally good ingredients that are equally good that can do the same thing. I also appreciate that this brand doesn't take the same types of ingredients and just dilute them out into different vehicles like a lot of brands do. So for example, we don't see um, a niacinamide and mar maracuja uh, mist, toner, essence, cream, lotion, you know, <laughs> eye cream, eye patch. We don't see all of that. Um, so it's keeping the number of products to, um, you know, fewer products which I appreciate. The other thing that you get in this that you are paying for is there is a, a promise that some of the proceeds from this brand are gonna go to different philanthropic you know, organizations which are listed on their website. And I think the, the founder is very, you know, very vocal about those. I mean, that's, that seems to be the passion behind this. And you may say, well, what percentage? It looks like from the website, 10%, they're trying to, they, they say on the website that 10% of sales from 2021 are gonna go to charity partners. And they're holding themselves accountable, at least based on what I read on their website, that every six months, they're gonna publish an externally verified report on how the money is being used, where it's going. So if that is what is important to you, then definitely check out that report that they're claiming that they're gonna offer, you know, ask for it so you can see yourself if that is important to you. So that is part, you know, of what you are paying in the upcharge here, A, to support somebody that you like and that provides good content on YouTube, and B, you know, these charities, these philanthropic organizations, they are claiming that 10% of the sales are going to those. So if that is, you know, something that speaks to you, then yeah, I, I don't think these products are bad. Uh, I think they obviously can improve upon them. There's always room for improvement. For example, I thought that the niacinamide product was a little bit more like a serum than a moisturizer. And, um, you know, the packaging things uh, I found were sometimes a little bit hard to get the product out. Uh, in a more streamlined fashion. But overall, these are not bad products. All right, guys, that is my review of Selfless by Hiram. I hope you all enjoyed this review. Um, again, not sponsored, but I did not have to pay for these products. They were sent to me for free. And let's be honest, Hiram mentions me on his channel a fair amount. And anytime he does, I directly benefit. I get more subscribers. So that is another potential source of bias here. I do wish Hiram the best of luck with this. And I really look forward to seeing how this launch impacts these different organizations down the road. I look forward to seeing that report. I really do believe that Hiram is pretty passionate about these uh, philanthropies. Uh, I remember a video from him. It's actually not on his main channel. He has another channel that doesn't have many videos. I think it only has the one where he talks about his experience doing emissions work in uh, different third world countries. And I really thought that was a good video. I hope he creates more content like that because he has a lot of experience that people uh, don't necessarily know about uh, with doing things like starting uh, nonprofits in other countries and the stumbling blocks that happen. You know, people get it in their head that they're just gonna go to another country and you know save these people who may be in a resource poor environment, but they don't realize that they actually can end up doing more harm than good. So I'm excited to see how Hiram's brand impacts some of these um, issues and I look forward to, to seeing more. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If so, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.